Yo, I don't know where you're at, what you're doing, or what day of the week it is for you, but over here at the CT101 iHeart Studios, ladies and gentlemen, it is Financial Fridays for us. I'm Tony K, your insider investor. I'm here to get your mind right and your money game tight. You're hearing me on the world-famous CT101, heard all over the world in over 183 countries, guys. Feel free, feel free, Jesus, Lord, <laughs> leave me a financial question anytime at 1-800-420-1980. You can always find me on Instagram at The Insider Investor. You can also follow the show on YouTube, guys, at Cannabis Talk 101. Like, follow, subscribe. That's how you keep us on air. Show us some love. Now, y'all don't know why I created Financial Fridays, right? Because after 20 years of being a Wall Street insider, I got sick and tired of watching the little guy get screwed over. So you know what I want to do? I want to introduce you guys to some of my friends, my family, my cohorts, some of the people that can put some wisdom into you and save you a little bit of money and maybe show you how to make some money. Now, here's one of my first rules of money, guys, is that taxes should not be a, a monthly problem or an April problem or an October if you're a corporation. You guys, your taxes should be a, a consideration you do monthly. It should be a strategist uh, approach to it. That's why I love my boys over at Easier Accounting, easieraccounting.com. These guys are out of Utah. It's a brick and mortar operation. Most importantly, they don't just help the big guys. They help the smaller entrepreneurs, LLC formation, company formation, taxes, et cetera. Everything I do with my accounting, I trust the guys over at Easier Accounting. Look them up online, Easier Accounting, it's in their name, and their phone number is 888-620-0770. Now, we're back here on another episode of Financial Fridays. Y'all, there's a lot of schism. I've been told not to curse no more. We have a new algorithm I got to look out for, so I got to be really careful. I got to self-censor myself, otherwise Connor's going to be on the little buzzer. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on when it comes to your money. Let's start with something fun. Now, I love to talk about space. These guys make fun of me. I have my conspiracy theories about space and the moon and all that. But there is space. <laughs> and we send people to space, right, Connor? Yep. Like we've uh, established that. Tell me who's up there right now. All right, dude. So I don't know their names. But there's a few Americans up there, a few fellow Americans. And these dudes and gals, I think there's a chick up there, too, which is a whole other story. <laughs> we'll segment into that a little bit later. But here's what's going on. These, these people were told they're going to space, Connor, for eight days. Eight days. And they were sent up there on a capsule built by Boeing. Now, Boeing got $4 billion and change, give or take a couple hundred million. But $4 billion, it's a lot of zeros, guys. Billion. B. They get up there. Floating around in space with the ISS. Again, <laughs> I have my own issues with space. But they're up in space into this multi-trillion dollar facility that we've now built just to float around in space. They get there. Now they can't get back home. You hear me, Connor? Like, yeah, they're, they're stuck. stuck. And like Lacey was thinking, like, no, they're not just, woo, la, 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 la. They're not just like in their space suits floating in outer space. They're, you know, they're in this thing. Not the most comfortable spot. You know, you don't have a master bedroom, you don't have a shower and jacuzzi, like you're pissing in a vacuum and, you know, forget about the sex side of it. Like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, are you just celibate for nine months? Do you not touch yourself? Like, what, what is going on here? Right? Most likely. Like, Daniel's looking at me more concerned than he has all day. <laughs> what concerns you about this, Daniel? Yeah, so, <laughs> do, you think, do you think they give the astronauts some sort of, like, uh, libido stabilizer or something uh, that gets them less horny. Dude, that would be like that. That's like conspiracy theory on conspiracy theories. Because now you're fucking with the like a dude's genetics and like, does that pill even exist? Like, maybe we should give that to child molesters and shit. You yeah, know, or, or people something. in prison. Like, if that does really exist, other than cat. No, I think, I think these people were told they're going up there for eight days, and now they're stuck. But let me guys, you know, let me give you the full like. This is straight out of a, an article that I just found here. So, days after, <laughs> just reading this makes me laugh. Days after NASA announced that two astronauts had been stranded on the ISS, the space agency had a series of contentious meetings with Boeing to determine how to bring them back to Earth, sources at Boeing and NASA said. The meetings, attended by senior level employees on both sides, were tense and involved yelling and arguments. It was heated, NASA said. Boeing was convinced that the Starliner was in good enough condition <laughs> to bring the astronauts home. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm in space and there's like something that's going to take me back to Earth, I don't want to hear the words good enough condition. 
Good enough condition is what I want to hear about the RV that I'm going to take to the festival. Good enough condition is about, you know, maybe the Uber driver taking me home. I don't want good enough condition <laughs> when I'm leaving space to make it back to Earth. Agreed? Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, there's a lot of... Boeing's just, you know, I mean, I, I'm not here to, you know, cock on any company, but Boeing's just, man, they've just been swinging and missing, dude. Like, Yeah, Daniel's uh, asking if you can sue them. Uh, you can't really sue them. The, you know, there's so much fine print. Even if you get on an airliner right now and something traumatic happens, there's caps. There's just uh, the, the tort laws and kind of capped compensation you can get. But unless it's, like, feasible, I think they call uh, mass negligence. In, in other words, they knew when they sent these dudes up, they knew there was something wrong with the propellant system. Like, yeah, it won't be bad enough. And that's what's kind of coming out now. So NASA was like, yo, if these dudes die, it's not going to be they died in a Boeing capsule. It's going to be NASA blew up a couple of astronauts. So NASA put their foot in the sand. They're like, nope, you're not going to bring them back home. And the dudes at Boeing, you know, who are all paycheck employees, you know, and they're dealing with it. And they're thinking like, no, we're, we're good enough. And that wasn't enough. So Boeing was convinced that the Starliner was in good enough condition to bring the astronauts home. NASA strongly disagreed. In the end, NASA decided to overrule Boeing's wishes and to have the company's biggest rival, your favorite person, Connor, hmm. Elon Musk, SpaceX, <laughs> bring home Butch Wilmore and Surrey William. I'm assuming it's a guy and a girl making a bigger assumption. Wilmore Williams, not sexually related. The two astronauts went up to the ISS in June for what was supposed to be an eight-day voyage, and they found themselves stranded when they discovered the helium links on Boeing Starliner which they had known about prior to launch, was more numerous than previously thought or told. Worse than that, the leaks were causing the thrusters to malfunction. The SpaceX mission won't happen until February, leaving these dudes and gals trapped in space for another eight months. Boeing wasn't happy, <laughs> says the NASA exec. And they made that perfectly clear to us. But what's the headline if there's a catastrophe failure? It's not Boeing killed two astronauts. It's NASA killed two astronauts. So it's better safe than sorry. Execs at the aerospace giant also made their displeasure clear to top-level employees in internal emails last week that the company shared with the post that were leaked. I know this is not the decision we had hoped for, but we are ready to stand out and uh, stand by and carry out the missions necessary to support NASA, Mark said of Boeing commercial crew. Focus remains first and foremost, blah, 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 sp uh, safety and crew. If that was true, they'd agree with the mission, which they don't. According to Boeing employees, the hope is that Starliner will return safely to Earth, giving the company leeway to claim that NASA was being overly cautious, which I don't believe. Inside commercials, Boeing's commercial space department, the demoralized team is reeling from the public setback. Let me, let me break this down for you guys. SpaceX, private company, right? Elon Musk, and the re I joke about it, I mean, you know, Con Connor's opinion I respect and value a lot. He just gives me a lot of shit for talking about Elon too much in space. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, a hater. I'm not a hater. No, you're definitely Elon, not right? a hater, but he's lectured me, and I'm like, dude, every time I think about it, I'm like, well, this is not my fault. We're talking about NASA, and somehow he jumps to the safety I didn't rescue. say anything today, okay? I did, you did. not. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. No, but, uh, but straight up, dude, I mean, this guy's just everywhere, and look at this. You know, a, a, a publicly traded company that has spent millions and billions of dollars electing officials, supporting congressmen, paying into the tax system. Boeing got $4 billion plus. You guys can look it up. It's like $4 billion and change from NASA as a government contract. Your dollars, my dollars got paid to Boeing for 10 missions. And they failed on their voyage, like their maiden voyage, which means their uh, first mission or flight nasa or excuse me spacex is on their 10th mission they're like like cranking along at their two billion and now they're being called in to save the day i don't know man i i just think that you know now what's the money take away from this where can you make money again i just do not give you guys advice on what to do with your money but here's what i would kind of look at it as right now boeing's in the news for all the wrong reason what was it like a, a door blew out on a freaking jairliner uh, a couple months ago a couple weeks ago yes Boop just the door flies out sorry didn't lock the doors that just 
that it just shouldn't happen every day, right? It's like when that airliner just disappeared in the middle of the ocean, everybody's like, how do you just, how does a plane disappear in this? Day? How does a door just fly out of the freaking plane? Yeah. So Boeing's on the hook for that. There's a lot of documents. You guys should self-educate yourself. A lot of this stuff is being censored for me. I mean, the powers that be, you know, that they, they got money in deep entrenched places from Netflix to Prime Video. Like, there's content that you're not meant to be widely distributed. The fact that we got Americans floating around in space right now with no way to get home other than a private company that is the target of half the country right now, that's suspect to me. You know, when we had Apollo 13 or 14 and those guys, you know, were lost in space too, the whole world was encapsulated on that. Nobody's talking about, these guys thought they were leaving their families for a week. Imagine, you said, bye kids, I'll be back next week. Boom, nine months later, hi mom. You know, you're up in space-ish. So, without sounding like a deranged lunatic <laughs> on this episode of Conspiracy Wars. <laughs> 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 no, nah, man, I, I just think there's le- layers to this shit. I think uh, Boeing has got dark times ahead financially. If you just look at it from a common sense approach, you know, when, when you hear something goes wrong right now in aerospace, you assume now that it's Boeing. And that, you know, the analysts call it like a ne- negative consumer uh, index approach or whatever, but... It's basically like that, there's not a positive thing to Boeing right now. Yeah, you know, they make a lot of planes, but they're making a lot of mistakes. But there are a lot of documentaries right now on Netflix, YouTube, uh, even Prime Video about talking about these whistleblowers uh, on Congress last week. They, they were being silenced. They were being pressured. They were being threatened. So there's some weird-ish going on with Boeing. So keep an eye on that. If I was a betting man, I'd say the stock would go down. But again, this is not financial advice. This is financial opinions. We'll be right back on Financial Fridays. Oh, yeah. You guys, Master Mentors Live. Check them out. In fact, we're going to be in Texas next week. Dallas, Texas, I see you. Master Mentors Live is coming to a city near you. Check out the website. We're probably done for the rest of the year. But if you guys are interested in getting into the canopreneur space, cashing in on the modern day green rush look us up hit us up send me a dm ask me how we can help you there's a lot of different ways you can get involved in the industry from ancillary businesses hvac development white labeling you name it we got you covered master mentors live is coming to a city near you we're now back here on financial fridays on ct 101 iHearts radio i just left talking about a publicly traded company boeing and again multiple disclaimers i'm not giving you advice i'm not shitting on a company this is just my personal opinion i'm no longer licensed i don't want to be licensed i'm not allowed to be licensed but this is where i'm coming from me of just multiple decades of experience and just telling you when i see something on the wall i got to share it with you guys and if there's money to be made that's where i would go with that one but so boeing we were talking about a thumbs down now here we are to another publicly traded company which I also don't want to make any enemies at because they control a lot of this world now. And that is Meta. So you guys, Meta, obviously Mark Zuckerberg, you know, and I have no love or hate for this company. It is some, a company that a lot of people love to shit on and hate on. But for me, man, it's, it, you know, they had a vision. Uh, I believe in what he did. If you've seen the movie, it's pretty accurate from what I've told. Uh, I didn't have a lot of run-ins with him. I, we were at a couple of the same events together when I was on Wall Street with Mark. And I've actually sat in the back room of the New York Stock Exchange, right where he sat in. Every company that ever goes public, uh, the day be- or that morning, all the C-level, C-level execs meet at this private dining room. It's got about a, it's like a hundred person long dining room table. I wasn't allowed to take pictures, but every CEO who's ever gone public has breakfast there that morning and so it was a very powerful moment felt a lot of nostalgia but anyways that's the closest i've gone to him we've been at a couple of different forums and and uh speaking events together but outside of that haven't had a lot of uh run-in with mark but mark came out this this past week actually i think it was this week and he came out with something pretty powerful man he says look man he sent a letter to congress now this is zuckerberg who owns uh who controls instagram controls facebook I believe WhatsApp and a handful of other little obscure companies. And these guys are on a buying tear and they're making a killing, man. Any industry you're in, if you're doing something in social media, you're definitely giving him some of your dollars. But, and I have no ill will against this man. You know, I think he's doing the best he can in a political uh, landscape. But Mark came out and he sent out a letter to Congress and he says, look, man, I apologize. I apologize because the White House pressured Facebook into some content repression during the pandemic. Now, I bring this story for, to you guys for several reasons. There is a money approach here, right? You know, for those of you trading the market, again, this is not advice. This is just 
opinions based on multiple decades in the industry. But when you look at the CEO come out and take a stance like this, right? And he's historically, if you guys were wondering, he's been more politically aligned towards the left. He gave, I think, like $230 million, which may sound like a lot, but when you're worth $80 billion, you know, it's a drop in the bucket. But he's typically been aligned more towards the left. And I think during this administration, he's kind of stayed quiet. Uh, he hasn't donated much, but he finally admitted what a lot of us knew. And I think, you know, if you're a business person, if you're a person uh, who's in influence, who, who has a follower base that they rely on on curating clients or opportunities, there was something called being shadow banned. And this was something I didn't know about. I had no idea what it was. I had some friends in the bodybuilding community that had millions of followers and I would look at their accounts and they were like, watch, I'll post this and I'll lose X, Y, Z number of followers and these are not organic. So at MetaCO, and I'm reading this to you from my very neutral website called the AP, the Associated Press. Here it goes. MetaCO, Mark Zuckerberg, says that senior administration official pressures, pressured Facebook to censor some COVID-19 content during the pandemic and vowed that social media giant would push back if faced such demands again. In a letter to Rep. Jim Jordan, the RNC uh, House Judi Judiciary Committee, Zuckerberg alleges that officials from the White House repeatedly pressured Facebook for months to take down certain content, including humor and satire. You guys, last time I checked, this was a free country. Comedians could be comedians. You could make people laugh. You could make satire. All of a sudden, you got these obscure, I mean, this is like men in black come alive, dude. This is like shit that you thought this country could not become, which we just kind of accepted after a while, right? So the government can now tell the leading social media company of the United States what content to put out and what content not to. And by the way, this, this I love this sentence, pressured, pressured. The officials expressed a lot of frustration, quotes, expressed a lot of frustration when the company didn't agree, he said in the letter. I believe the government, this is from Zuckerberg, I believe, quotes, I believe the government pressure was wrong and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. Letter dated August 26. Guys, this is pretty massive. Let me tell you something now. Zuckerberg ain't doing this out of the comfort of his heart. He's not doing this because he gives a crap about free speech, in my opinion. I think he's doing it. He's hedging his bets, right? He knows what happened there. Now, this article, I'm not going to get into the political landscape of it, but this artist, article goes a little bit deeper. It even talks about how they were pressured by the Biden administration and the current administration to censor and... Uh, basically shadow ban and, and block people and punish people for resharing a story about Hunter Biden's laptop because this was Russian collusion. And then they admit now, for the first time publicly, you don't hear about it. You're hearing about it here, but Google it. It's facts. It's from the government. They're telling you it. Zuck's telling you this. The White House is admitting it. They agree. It wasn't. They just lied. They just made up shit to make free speech not free again, right? So I get a lot of hate mail lately. I got a lot of things. Oh, dude, you're right. We, no, man, I'm not. I'm not political at all. I'm just like, where did we go wrong with the common sense? Where did free speech go in this country that it's now affecting your bottom line? Why is the most? When I look at my marketing budget on almost every company that I have that we spend marketing dollars on. Social media marketing is the top line, most expensive ad expenditure we have from a marketing standpoint. And these are the companies getting our dollars. And that's who the feds and the White House and the politicians are going to to suppress information. That shit's scary, guys. So what does that tell you about your money and what you're doing? Keep your eyes open. Watch the news. Read between the lines. Look at both sides. If you're a liberal, read the Republican stuff. If you're a Republican, read the liberal stuff. Like, you got to see, there's angles in all this. There's not one trick pony. I'm not waving a red flag or a blue flag. There, there's things that are happening right now that are affecting your bottom line, that are affecting of how you consume your news, how you consume your advertisements. Like, it's just, there's layers to this stuff, guys. And I've been talking about this for three or four years. I was made fun of. I was, I was deplatformed. I was shadow banned. 
And now they're just kind of slipping it in on the Friday news dumps. Like, yeah, sorry, you were right. You know, that, that shit's really been going on in this country. So what does that say about Facebook? I, I got to tell you, I think it's a positive. I think he's, uh, as a CEO, he's super smart. He's hedging his bets. He's like, look, if Trump wins, at least he's on his good graces. He's kind of sending this letter to Congress. If Biden wins, he's still their puppet. And he's like, look, guys, I bow down to you once. I'll do it again. So I think he's playing both cards. I think nobody can do what they're doing right now. They're charging it there. Their revenues are through the door. Um, it's not a bad play. I was involved in their IPO back in the day. So I got a deep, deep history with Facebook. And again, I'm not here to prog prognosticate. I'm not here to be a fortune teller. I'm just here to tell you guys the truth. What I'm seeing here right now, it, it's it's reassuring to, to know that free speech, you know, is still slightly respected, even though I don't, I just don't think people care anymore. I think we've become so desensitized that the value of free, uh, free speech we've lost. Anyways, on a brighter note, we'll be right back on Financial Fridays. I got one more segment for you. We'll be right back. Have you guys ever found yourself caught up in need a lawyer? Let me help you out now. You guys... Find my friend Freddie Sage over at the Fox Firm. That's thefoxfirm.com with two X's, or better yet, give him a call, 310-877-5033. My man Freddie got you covered for the cannabis uh, law. He's got entertainment law, criminal defense. He's your one-man shop. If, you, if he can't handle it, he's got you covered, guys. Again, look him up online. That's the Fox Firm with two X's or 310-877-5033. We're now back here on Financial Fridays on CT101 iHeart's Radio. Look, man, we just covered a couple of big topics, right? We got Facebook in the news. We got Boeing in the news. And now we got a national decision that's been coming out from the DNC and the platform. And it's talking about giving $25,000 to first-time home buyers for. Now, this is where it gets a little bit of gray area, guys. And again, not to get political, but we just got to look at the money. Because your tax dollars is money that you're putting in your pocket every day. So what this is reading now from just ABC News out here in California. Will California help undocumented immigrants buy their first home? It's up to Newsom now. And again, full disclosure, guys, I'm an immigrant into this country. Came here when I was two years old. I have no skin in this game other than the fact that I think what's fair is fair and what's right is right. And your dollars in your pockets or your dollars in your pockets, and this is how it's going to now be spent. Now, again, I haven't done enough research. I'm going to rely on you, Connor, here to do a little bit of the background, but there's two sides of the story, right? There's the, there, there's the argument that's been made that, look, man, you know, we all bust our butts every day to make money. We pay taxes on taxes on taxes. You pay tax on gas. You pay taxes on income. You pay taxes on wealth. When you die, the tax, it can go on and on, right? So now it's like, all right, well, what are those monies being used for? So... There's a law that's now being uh, fast-tracked up to Newsom, and this is more on a national platform that they put out, but it's also coming out now here locally and uh, wanting to kind of put this on the forefront for the California Initiative. I'm going to read straight from this uh, ABC News article. A bill that could help undocumented immigrants purchase their first home in California is heading to the governor for a final decision. The bill from Assemblyman Dr. Joaquin Arambula out of Fresno, is meant to clarify that undocumented immigrants have the ability to apply to the California Dream for All loan program if they meet the qualifications. Part of that qualification includes securing a bank loan or mortgage and repaying the loan with zero interest when homes are sold. Keep that word in mind, with zero interest. Now, this is the bill. AB 1840 does not create a new homeowner equity assistance program for a specific group, nor does it give away free money. Already anybody who can apply meets the existing, this is according to this guy. However, California state Republicans are calling on the governor to veto the bill, saying it would give taxpayer dollars to undocumented immigrants to buy a house. Many, gener many now this is a true story, I think we can all attest to this, many generational Californians can no longer afford to buy a house here in California thanks to unsustainable economic policies. Every dollar given to an illegal immigrant is a dollar taken away from legal residents, including my favorite veterans and their families. So what are we talking about here, Connor? So here, here's the thing, and I heard this, and I watch everything, dude. I watch the RNC, the DNC. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not politically aligned. I just want to see where the money's flowing or where the lies are being told. So at the end of the day, you know, I have a, a very soft spot in my heart for veterans, and I have no skin in the game. Like I said, I came to this country uh, migrated legally. My parents did as well. My sister was already born here. I became a naturalized citizen myself, I think when I was 17 or 18. But so, and, and I know the work it took. At the same time, I know there's a lot of people that got here maybe illegally, 
work their butts off, that have, that have put money into the system, they also deserve some care and compassion. Where I have an issue is when all of a sudden our veterans are being pushed aside now, and now there's new legislation and hyper-focus on, forget about the people that came here before, but right now with everything going on, there's still this like push, mass push to keep incentivizing new people to come here legally or illegally. So that's where kind of I stand on it personally, not speaking on it on behalf of anybody else. But this new program also says that you can claim a $150,000 home loan at 0% interest. Now, let's put our money hats back on, right? What I always talk to you guys about and try to really preach is that there's never anything for free. When they say loan forgiveness program to college students, there's no magic loan fairy that popped up and said, dude, your college debt is wiped out. Daniel, you pay taxes, right? Yeah. You're paying for loan forgiveness. Connor, you... You pay taxes, right? Yes, sir. That's loan forgiveness, my friend. They should just call, call it everybody's paying for your shit forgiveness. Sorry, there's kids in the studio. But y'all y'all hear what I'm saying, right? This is not about being compassionate. Like, if there was unlimited amounts of money, I'm all for it. I was a college student. I have college debt. Still probably paying it off somewhere, right? But when they, they magically bring these words together, like college forgiveness plan. No, nah, dude, somebody's paying for that. So this 0% home loan thing who's giving money at 0% because sign me up times 10 on Sundays, right? Know, right? So th this th the way they package these words and these bills, and they and they both do it, guys. This isn't a liberal. This isn't a left, right? This isn't Republicans, Democrats. It's a money up. thing. It's just a money thing, dude. We're all human. We're all Americans. Why can't people just have conversations? Why do I got to tiptoe around haters DMing me about crap that they didn't like? Dude, let's just have a conversation. You can come on my show anytime, you know? Don't sit here and be a keyboard warrior and just think that, like, oh, your side's right. No, dude. They, they, they've been manipulating this game since you were born. If this side wins, they still win. If that side wins, they still win. This is a money game, and they're playing chess, and you're playing checkers. So, continuing on. AB 140 is about providing an opportunity to hardworking, responsible people who dream of owning a home and passing that legacy to their children a dream that we have for all of our families in California. This guy wrote the bill. And that includes undocumented immigrants who have lived here for decades and pay their taxes. They have social security numbers and ITNs. So, yeah, I agree. Now, what about the veterans, though? Like, wh why are we not putting that much attention towards our veterans? And then towards our mental health crisis in the schools right now. You know, I have loved ones right now that are in the mental health system that are being laid off. And we saw what the pandemic did to the youth of this generation. I mean, these kids are like, I thought our generation was rough, man. These kids have it rough. They were completely sideswiped by what was going on. And now they're cutting their mental health access, et cetera. So I just think that there's bigger problems that we need to focus on. I do think this is a political ploy. Connor, what's your thoughts? Did I, did I miss paraphrase here or anything? Am I missing anything? No, and I just, I wanted to add that, you know, I just beside opinions, like, you know, I, it, it wasn't, planned out well from from my understanding and from what i've read you know essentially they've ran out of money all already for the first round of it when they did it back in june and out of eighteen thousand applicants only 1700 were accepted when they ran out of money and you know obviously 1700 people getting into a home like that's obviously a massive difference however uh you know I, it's due to that fact it doesn't seem sustainable to me well, to kind of also take that to another step further, I do remember when I was on Wall Street and I would see these multi-billion dollar REITs. REIT stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. And these, these were like legalized Ponzi schemes, man. They were, they, they'd structure these investments to promise our investors 7 8% return. We were legally allowed to go out there and sell it, but they were using new proceeds to pay these dividends. And by all intents and definition, that's a Ponzi scheme. But somehow Wall Street, you know, articulated this, that this was a – and they still sell them to this day. You know, uh, it's just something that they do. My point is that a lot of these laws that get pushed to these politicians, they're just puppets, dude, on both sides. But what happens is I wouldn't be surprised, like you just said, out of 18,000 applicants, 1,700 qualified. But it's going to be the builders that push this. It's going to be the contractors that are incentivized by this. It's going to be the lenders that are getting the back-end uh, financial services business out of it. It's never, it's never that the government is looking out for your best interest, ever. I don't care who's in charge. 
Charles in charge. It doesn't matter who it is. They're never, it's not about you. There's layers to these bills and laws. And that's why I always try to dissect them. I'm like, all right, cool. If the left brought it out, if the right brought it out, it is what it is. But there's always an agenda. And if you follow the money trail, quickly you'll find out, oh, there's the lobbyist that's paying for it. It is financial services. It is the builders. It is the mortgage companies. There's always layers to this shit. You know what I'm saying? And so the more you, the more you kind of dive between – now, this one was news to me. You know, when we were talking about it earlier in our production meeting, I didn't want to talk about it too much because I haven't really dived into it. I haven't reached out to the people that I know. But just looking on the surface, it's obviously a pandering to the voters, et cetera. But there is a common sense that I think the average American right now is just getting sick and tired of. It's like, dude, what was that other article we were talking about talking about today, man? Like we accidentally gave $290 billion dollars to the or a million dollars to the Taliban like whoops sorry you know it's a country that our veterans bled died for spent trillions of dollars on this war left in disgrace after 20 years killed some people on the way out then now they're every woman every girl can't even go to school there now completely just like five-year-old cannot read or write they're not allowed to go to school everything's back to the way it was if not more and they have eight billion dollars worth of our you know military toys so there's after a while, I just think as, as, as Americans, we're looking at this info and we're just so saturated with noise that when it comes down to the common sense, we're afraid to talk about it. We're afraid we're going to be censored, shadow banned, canceled. People are going to DM us saying, hey, I don't like your content. You know, all you can do is just speak up, guys. And that's what it is. And, and I have found that when I follow the money, it, it helps me make more money maybe by sharing this information with you, not on this last one, you know, shit, if, if you're an undocumented immigrant, definitely look into it. You know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm equal opportunity with my money and advice. Take advantage of it. I mean, they're, they're going to put it out there. You know, you're welcome, <laughs> right, for the taxes. But, yo, know, I've, I've been there. You know, I have no hate in my heart for anybody. It's just a matter of what are we doing with our money and let's be, be a little bit smarter with our money. So on that note, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Financial Fridays. My name is Tony K, the insider investor here on Financial Fridays. Remember, keep your mind right, keep your wallet tight. We'll see you next time here on Financial Fridays.